I am on a Zoom conference call with my good friend, Art Wolf. Um, uh, I've known Art for many, many years, and we've done some amazing travels together. And uh, he's one of the most prolific photographers I know. He's, um, it's, I always learn something from Art. And uh, this is the first of many interviews we're going to be doing over Zoom, talking to photographers and leaders in the industry and manufacturers in the industry in regards to um, things that are changing. Uh, obviously, every one of our lives, everybody across the planet has been changed by this uh, terrible virus. Um, you know, on a personal side of things, we've put uh, Deborah's dad in a hospital last night as a COVID suspect, and we're hoping he does okay. But I think sooner or later, this virus will touch a number of people that we all know one way or another. And um, we just have to keep putting positive thoughts, prayers, and uh, hope that we can all make it through this, these, these tough times. But uh, today I wanted to talk to Art specifically about what he's doing during this time and also uh, have Art share with us some things that uh, he's working on. Um, first off, Art and I just, what, two months ago, <laughs> it seems like yesterday, got off a, a ship from Antarctica kind of just as this thing was breaking. As we were getting on the ship, they stopped everybody that was coming with a Chinese or a Hong Kong passport from uh, being part of the group. And of course, we had a do a questionnaire and get our temperature taken. And luckily we had a great trip and uh, it's just kind of hard to believe that uh, by the time we got on that ship and came off the ship and within a week or so after that, the whole world has changed. So Art, you know, tell me a little bit about uh, what you've been doing. You live in Seattle and you've been in, you're in the hot spot. We were in the hot spot. Now New York, unfortunately, has taken over. I think uh, our governor, Jay Inslee, uh, was right. He started socialize, social isolating really early on, along with um, Governor Newsom down in California. So the both states really early on started social distancing and encouraging people to stay home, which is exactly what I've done. And we're seeing the fruits of our labor. Um, all our uh, infections are going uh, plummeting to the degree that our governor has sent a lot of uh, supplies eastward to states that are now going through the brunt of it. I'll tell you, one of the things that I guess I've seen out of, coming out of this is all the governors, or at least most of them, have done remarkable jobs. In Inslee, for example, obviously um, got under our president's um, uh, bad side there for a while, but you know he was right doing what he was doing. And the fact that you know governors like uh, him and maybe Kumo and others are real insistent and proactive in regards to uh, the welfare of their citizens. And it's inconvenient for us, but, you know, you and I aren't sick and uh, a lot of other people aren't sick as a result of that whole social distancing and lockdowns. Yeah, I, I believe the governors really have stepped up uh, where our national leadership, our national leadership has failed. So politics aside, I think the governors are doing a great job. And yes, uh, New York uh, governor is really um, showing the stress, but also the care and being blatantly honest as to the day-to-day -day, um, struggle. He's done a great job. I would uh, use the word empathy. And I think that's something that uh, we need more of right now. Anyway, let's, let's get back on topic a little bit. So okay. you've, been, you've been locked in the house. And of course, I can't think of a, a better house to be locked into than your house, sitting on top of the hill overlooking uh, you know, the, the, the sound and so forth. But you know, it's all changed us and made us look at doing projects. What have you been doing with yourself? Uh, my house is on a hillside that falls away on three sides. And on the north side is a green belt below. And between my property and the green belt, over the last seven years, I've neglected just because I simply haven't had the time to travel, uh, to get on the hillside and remove the invasives, which constantly are growing atop the trees. So I've spent a lot of time really working on long-term projects that I've not been able to get to. You know, over the last two years, I figure that I've been home only about 40 days out of the year. So this is what you get when you're working on seven different book projects, but you're also teaching and taking people on grand tours around the globe. There isn't a lot of home time. Now I've had it, and I'm working on it, and I've just summarily gone through the garden, the home, cleaned up projects that I haven't been able to do. And then when I go in my home, I've been working and assembling 25 unique 
lectures that we'll bring to the uh, internet within a couple of weeks. And so it's gonna be, it's basically amassing all the teaching that I've done over the last 40 years. We've kept the old lectures, I've refreshed them. There's a lot of content. We're calling it Pathways to Creativity. And so that's keeping me really on the ball, uh, late up at night, up early, working on my computer and just assembling all this knowledge that I've accrued over the years. Is this going to be for uh, new talks out in the public or are you going to put it on video and uh, sell it, share it or uh, distribute it or what, what's your plans there? Well, you know, at this point, I think B&H and Canon will uh, get behind it and promote it. I, yeah, it will be on online education with 25 uh, unique um, talks that are probably 30 minutes to 50 minutes long. We'll offer it on our, uh, on our website. We'll connect it through our friends like you so that people can buy it, order it, um, upload it from your sites and we'll just see where it goes. But I've not never brought personal content online before. I've worked occasionally with Creative Live on, um, you know, downloadable content, but that's largely under their umbrella. Now it's under mine and I'm really uh, mining the last 20 years of shooting digital and bringing that into these lectures. So I'm, I'm hopeful and I'm excited. And I've always felt obligated to pass on whatever knowledge I've accrued, I want to pass that on. I'm trained as a teacher and trained as a fine artist, and I'm bringing both to bear in this series of lectures. That's actually very incredible. And of course, you're adapting to the, the, the new times, and I think a lot of us are going to be off the road for a while. You know, almost like a retrospective. And, um, you know, I can tell everybody, I mean, I've, I've sat through numerous uh, lectures that you've given. And of course, sometimes you want to pick on me because you see my bobbly head. But <laughs> <laughs> the point is, I learn something each time. I've never seen somebody that can be so articulate and, and so passionate about uh, what 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 you share and how you've shared it. Um, you know, it, 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 working with art and, and, you know, seeing these presentations and each one is usually customized to the audience that you know, art has uh, done, you know, specifically lectures that you've done as well as, you know, on the workshops and so forth. And, you know, all along the way, you know, you're working on books and, um, you know, I'm very proud because I've got a lot of Art Wolf books. I've got three of them here I wanted to share with everybody and we'll put the links up. This is probably one of the finest books I think art's ever done. Um, and I've got the, um, the slipcover version also. And this is the human canvas, which you kind of, um, went sideways from your normal nature and landscape and uh, culture of things to something that, you know, you were very passionate about as far as a project goes. Maybe we can have an individual talk about that sometime on itself. Sure. The most recent one, which I've just received is um, uh, the wild elephant project, which just is stunning. I mean, um, I just sit on the, the couch, you know, with Deborah and we go through this book and um, it's just a, a great story about uh, <laughs> The, the animal is so close to extinction and the challenges that they all face. And of course, there are many more uh, animals on the planet, such as polar bears and whales and things that kind of go through the same thing. But this is just a, a beautiful book uh, on elephants. We'll be doing a review and sharing some of it and making sure you all will have the link for this uh, in the very near future also. And then one of the most spectacular books uh, I recently received, and we did a review on this on... Um, Photo PXL already, which is the trees project. And uh, it's also just quite nice. How in the world do you manage to, to, to keep publishing these books and working on them? And, you know, and you do this because I know six years ago, I was with you on a project and you were telling me I'm shooting some of the stuff for this and that. I got this book project coming up that's due in five years. I mean, you go way out on the calendar on some of the stuff, don't you? I do. I work on each book uh, approximately nine years. And that means then that I have to uh, photograph all these books at the same time. In other words, if I'm going to India or Africa or uh, Madagascar, for instance, there are different um, genres within each location that feeds these different books. For instance, if I go to Africa, I could do tribal shamanism. 
and wildlife and landscapes and trees all at the same time. So I'm spreading out the cost of travel and underwriting these books. I really don't ask publishers for an advance because it's almost negligible compared to what it costs to produce a book. So with nine years of travel, teaching workshops, taking tours with uh, folks, I basically can underwrite the book as I'm going along. You spend, you said like 40 days at home last year. How do you manage to uh, assemble all these photographs, you know, keep them organized and, you know, get the book projects, you know, and, and keep those moving forward? I've been very fortunate to uh, assemble a small group of people that work with me. They've worked with me in, in the case of a couple of them for over 30 years. So they work with the publishers, the editing, they're fine writers, they're very intelligent people. All I do is keep track of my travel and what I'm trying to focus on. And then I have meetings when I'm home with the staff, they carry the torch forward when I'm gone. So it really takes a village to do a book. And I've got a great set of villagers, but then I also have a great publisher that will publish my books. And he is out of San Rafael, California, and he's very much aesthetically similar to what I'm into. And so it's been a perfect marriage over the years, and I love working with this guy. That's tremendous. You're lucky to have something like that. What about prints these days? Are you, are you taking any of the images from these projects and uh, doing fine art wall prints, or you just yeah. see that as a marketplace still that is, is strong? Uh, the marketplace really left the planet a long time ago, uh, 2008, really our last financial crisis, kind of put... Uh, a damper on the economy, but also on the fact that people were buying wall art for their homes. Because at the same time, the internet, the same time cameras became a lot easier to use and people tend to put their own work on the walls, which is perfectly fine. And then there's the fact that the younger people don't even have the dream of owning their own houses. So they're living in condominiums or small uh, apartments. And so they're not putting money in fine art on their wall. Having said all of that, of course, we do sell prints on our, uh, on our site. Uh, everything I basically have shot goes into galleries that are um, basically people can order and they still do, but not to the extent that we could sustain galleries in the past. It's just the evolution of cultures. Nothing stays the same. No road goes straight forever. And so you have to adjust to the changing times. And changing times we're in and adjusting we're going to have to do even further, I think. You know, before I, I go into a, a topic along that line, you know, one of the things that I would like to, to say, and, and maybe you can touch base on it a little bit, obviously we've traveled a lot, we've shared um, rooms and, and cabins, and one of the things that's always interesting to see is Art will stay up and keep going. So if we shoot during the day and we might shoot landscapes or it could be whatever we do in Antarctica or Greenland or whatever these places are, one of the things, and I'm kind of like art, you know, we get off to the Zodiac, we get back on a ship or we get back to the room, we download our images right away. And rather than just say, I'm gonna wait till I get home, you know, we're working on the initial calling and, and initial edits and, you know, getting them out there as quick as we can. You know, to, to, well, I mean, obviously you'd fall behind, but can you say something about that? You know, how do you how do you maintain the energy of doing everything like that on a daily basis when we're out? Well, there? with the fact that I'm maybe home forty days out of a year, there's no time, honestly, to edit once I'm home. And as competent and confident as my staff are, they do not want to throw images away or delete images. So it falls upon me, and I stay abreast on a daily basis. But if I shoot 10,000 images in Antarctica, when I actually arrive back in Seattle, I may have a thousand images at the best. So I am diligent on staying atop it. And just because I don't wanna keep paying money for storage and keep expanding our archive, it does anyways, but not to the degree that we need, you know, 10 versions of the same image. And so I'm very judicious and uh, decisive about that. And yeah, I love looking at pictures. Uh, I can't imagine not looking at them. Mm -hmm. I adjust them. And usually, as you pointed out, I work on the images the very day that I shoot them. Yeah, so it's always been fun editing side by side with you as we look over each other's shoulders at what we're producing. And um, 
you know, it, it's just been, it's, a, it's been a privilege that way for me. Thank you. Um, and uh, just plain old fun. Um, one of the things that I, I want to talk about, though, is the future. And um, yeah. we're, we're facing not only a, a, a new present time where we're all locked in the house, but a question specifically for somebody like yourself that travels so much is what comes next? I mean, once we're told that uh, things lighten up and you know maybe air opens up, what, what are we going to do? There's still no cure or vaccine for the virus. How? Are, what, what's your plans for the future in regards to your projects to keep them ongoing and moving forward? I have no doubt that we're going to have a vaccine. You know, there's so many entities, including the University of Washington, that are making great headway towards a vaccine. I think by the time uh, late fall, late fall comes along, I think there will be several vaccines out there that are viable. Uh, I don't think it's a huge mystery. This is a protein, not an animal. And the protein is a, uh, got fats around it, which attacks, uh, attaches to lungs. It's extremely virulent in getting itself around the globe, but we can figure it out. I can't figure it out, but the scientists and the uh, uh, will figure it out. And it's no different than any other previous uh, illness. I mean, it's very successful, but there's been COVID's around for the, or coronaviruses around. And we can figure this out. And I have no doubt that it will happen in a, within the year. And that will change, you know, people's perception. If they're inoculated against it, then we move forward. And I believe that will happen without so any you, hesitation. So you're going to probably wait till we do have some sort of vaccination or um, something along those lines or immunity that uh, you can move forward like that? I mean, I've got to post uh, potential trips in September, October, November. I cannot not do that. You know, we're wildlife and nature and cultural photographers and we live hand to mouth. And so maintaining a staff, uh, I've got to generate income. So uh, the pathways to creativity will help. We, uh, We'll do critiques of portfolios, which will help, but we also got to get back out there in the field. And I think that maybe what we'll do is uh, when testing becomes even more uh, easy, then we'll make sure that the participants are, have been tested and proven negative, and we can conduct our workshops on that level. It's a little ways away. You know, what, it, it's a changing uh, dynamic day by day, and I try to stay abreast of it. But I'm not hugely pessimistic. I think this is just one more challenge that we've met in the past. There's been plagues, there's been viruses, there's been illnesses. I can remember as a boy lining up and getting my shots for everything from measles to chicken pox. And, sure. you know, it's just the way it is. It is. And I, you know, both of us are optimists, not pessimists. And, you know, of course, I, I'm retaining the same thing. We haven't canceled our, our South Bar trip yet, um, which is late August, hoping that uh, there might be hope there. Um, lately, I, I seem to be losing a little bit of that hope. But hey, you know, there's always the following years. And, you know, there's certainly plenty of places still to go. One of my concerns, though, is what happens to the photographer? You know, all these photo enthusiasts, you know, are they going to still be buying cameras and you know, will they pick up where they left off or, you know, have things changed? Um, there were so many photographers out there, you know, part-time shingle uh, kind of photographers that uh, are now doing other projects. And um, of course, you know, a lot of them just shot for social media and not made any money. You know, we're just kind of curious how that might all come back. And I don't know if we have the answer, but it's going to be interesting. Well, I do. To, to I have the answer. answer. People, all right. <laughs> people will go right back to what they love to do. And all the photographers that were populating my workshops and tours, and I would always have to advocate to them that they're doing that for their own mental and physical health, passion, creativity, all that feeds the soul and makes people live longer. So they're not uh, live longer. They're not going to abandon that. They'll get right back. You know, we're creatures of habit, and once they discovered the joy, the passion of creating images. They're not going to walk away from that. They'll be I, back there on on the horse. I, I'm I'm believing you're right, and I really hope to see that. Uh, we're going to be talking to a couple camera store manufacturers, and obviously some other photographers in the near future. And of course, as that expands, we'll get a, a bigger handle on how people feel about that. But I know the folks that have uh, missing out on the workshops that I've had scheduled so far have all said, you know, are you going to be doing these in 21? If so, put my name down. 
So, you know, I think the optimism is still there and, you know, the, the interest is still there. Um, and like a lot of things, you know, we come back from these things. Um, well, think, let me put it in another way. You know, I travel all the time. I've been inoculated against everything you could possibly be inoculated, including just less than a, lot, a month ago had my last rabies shot. You know, if you have monkeys jumping on your head, as I have done, you don't want to take a chance when you're in Sulawesi or, you know, Tanzania, having a monkey jump, jump on your head. So I've been inoculated against everything we could inoculate ourselves. Uh, I take malaria pills when I'm in a very hot malaria zone, and malaria kills a lot more people than Corona does. So, you know, we just deal with what we've got, and you cannot isolate yourself forever and you want to get right back. Uh, the things that I'm worried about are my favorite restaurants. Are they going to be able to sustain themselves? And I don't think they are. I think a lot will go out of business, unfortunately. Uh, I think there will be change, but we live in constant change. So, you know, you embrace change. I have over the years, I'm not embracing Corona. I think it's tragic that so many people have lost their lives. Oh, me too. And I'm not trying to make light of that. People's families have been changed forever. But I think it's just part of the human condition and the world we live in that these things will come out. I hope that if this, in fact, came out of China, that they would diligently close down the bush markets. Um, you know, H1N1 came out of the bush. Uh, SARS came out of the bush. Ebola came out of the bush and AIDS came out of the bush. We should not be eating wild animals that carry various vir viruses into the human population. No question about that. You know, what? one of the things that I sat in bed last night thinking... Um, about the, tour, uh, the lecture we're going to do together. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to do that someday. That would be great. Thinking but, about me. Yeah. What, <laughs> <laughs> Don't don't let me don't let me drift off a path there because oh, okay. we okay. could share we could share some stories there. But you know, <laughs> one of the things that I, I'm thinking on a more global basis, you know, probably for the first time in in you know history, uh, the whole world has faced the same challenge and is fighting the same challenge. And you know, being the optimist, being the dreamer, I just hope that you know this is one sign and one thing that maybe helps the world over the coming months as we get over this and still deal with this and move on from this, that uh, we, we've done it together. We fought a common enemy here and, you know, a lot of us have learned something. Um, you know, in your travels and in mine, one of the things that I think we've seen is, you know, you can put people from 31 different countries in a ship and everybody gets along. I mean, yeah. really, it's remarkable that, you know, people have passions, they want to smile, they want to be happy and they just want to enjoy life. Um, you know, the conflicts come from obviously the government, but now, you know, even the governments have had to come together to try to beat this thing and deal with this. So uh, I am trying to maintain my optimism and my dreamer uh, attitude towards this and hope that, you know, we see more of that specifically as we, you know, share this with the people around the world. This is not countries and cities anymore. We live in a global environment. People will be watching this interview that we're doing around yeah. the world. If I may, um, almost all the books I've produced over the last 20 years have had an international uh, basis, you know, Trees of the World. I'm working on a book right now called Act of Faith, which looks at all the world's large religions, mm -hmm. the smaller religions, and also voodoo and shamanism. But I try to connect uh, through the books how small the planet is and how interconnected we are. And it is true. Uh, I think Corona virus has shown how connected we are. It's the age of world travel. That's something that might start in Wulong, China is in Finland within weeks. And so it is an interconnected world. We're very similar people. There are bad guys, bad players, but that's true in the suburbs of Seattle and the, you know, the countryside of Madagascar. It's just human nature that some people are not, you know, welcoming players, but for the most part, I think it's 95% of all humanity would bend over and pick you up if you fell. And that's how we're hardwired. So it's a very optimistic view. And I show that optimism not only in my lectures, but the books I produce. And, and I've, you know, being able to witness that, like we have on, on numerous occasions, gives me a lot of hope for where we're headed. 
Um, Art, you know, I could talk forever with you as I normally do. Normally we're doing this over a bottle of tequila, but uh, I do want to mention to everybody who's listening, even though uh, this won't come out before the, the next uh, Facebook um, live that you do last week. And of course this week you're doing on Thursday evenings, uh, a Facebook live uh, get together and talking about all sorts of things, kind of a, you know, let me have a drink and see where my mouth goes kind of thing. Right. I mean, absolutely. It's called tequila with art. It's on uh, five thirty West coast time on Thursdays. And it, and if you miss them, you can just go on Facebook, uh, go to Art Wolf's Facebook page, and uh, they're there, and you can play them back at your leisure. They're a lot of fun. Um, you know, we were sending messages on, and uh, Gav was said <laughs> sharing things with you, and it was uh, really fun to see, and it's just a pretty good spirit, and it kind of lifts you up, especially while we're all still locked in the house, and uh, gives me somebody else to drink with other than Deborah. Well, and just briefly, you know, it came about because we did get a lot of calls. Is art going crazy? And no, art's not going crazy. <laughs> and we want to share that. And uh, so people can, you know, uh, send in questions during that uh, half hour to hour. And it's both on Instagram and Facebook. So we welcome people. Along. Well, as we get closer to things and the uh, the presentations you're working on, uh, we now know we can connect easily with, with Skype and stay in touch with each other. Hopefully we can try to do this again somewhere in the near future. You know, I appreciate you taking your time out of the, your early part of your day because it was the later part of the day we would <laughs> have had a few shots by now. But, you know, uh, I, I want to say thank you. Um, I hope everybody on your staff, you, he's got a great staff, Libby, Chris, and Kyle, and the whole gang there uh, are doing well. And um, Gav and the whole crew, um, please be safe. Um, please stay healthy because uh, I, I want to do some more things with you. We have a, a trip we're working on right now, everybody, that hopefully Art and I uh, will be doing in Eastern Russia together. And uh, we'll have more to say about that as it develops. But that could be quite a little trip and a lot different than anything else we've done. So I, I guess we'd have to wean ourselves off tequila and switch on to vodka. Well, I don't think we'd have a problem changing to you. <laughs> <laughs> Art, if I was there, I'd give you a big hug. Thank you well, so thank much. You. All right. I'll look forward to our next chat. Yeah, well, thank you. And thank you to all our viewers and readers of Photo PXL and Rock Hopper Workshops, where we're trying very hard to uh, enhance your vision. Take care, everybody. Thank you.